you through a short tutorial about the Xilinx FPGA editor. As you may know, the Xilinx FPGA editor is part of the ISE development environment, which you can get from Xilinx in different ways. The FPGA editor can be started from within the ISE environment. As one can understand from where the tool is found, which is under the map group and the place and route group, FPGA editor works on the outputs of the map and the place and route processes. More precisely, the FPGA editor works on NCD files. But for most practical purposes, the editor is useful only with the output of a successful place and route process. Usually we take this output and make a bit file, which is in turn loaded to the FPGA. The twist about FPGA editor is that we can watch exactly what we got, and even make some changes, and only then continue to making a bit file. Before opening the editor, I usually make a copy of the NCD file, which I'm about to edit. This will allow me to revert to the original in case I want to start from scratch, without needing to rerun place and route. Personally, I prefer to run the editor using the command line. The NCD file can be used as an argument in order to open the design directly. Using the command line eliminates the possibility to unintentionally restart the whole implementation chain in case changes were made in the source files. And now to a quick show around of the windows of the FPGA editor. Basically, the FPGA editor has the well-known structure of a menu bar and a toolbar. The array window shows a graphical representation of the FPGA. The logic elements, real placements and connections are shown and can be altered here. The list window allows you to find the nets and components by their names. The world window gives the overview picture and shows what area of the entire FPGA is currently covered by the array. At the bottom we have a text window in which textual information is shown. Error messages and selected information about the logic will appear here. Now to the toolbar. I'll focus on the less obvious. Out of the six zoom buttons, I'll just mention that the one with the red rectangle zooms into the selected component. It's important because it's otherwise pretty difficult to find a certain component in a large array. These buttons control which logic elements are shown in the array. I suggest experimenting with these. I'll only mention that pips are the points in the fabric which connect between crossing lines. They are like switches on a switchboard. Also, be sure to have the apply button pressed. Let's get a closer look on the list box. The most useful lists are all components and all nets. The name filter allows us to use a common wildcard format to find a component or net by more or less knowing its name. Note that the names which appear in the list box are those which the synthesizer invented based upon names of registers, modules, instances and nets which appear in the Verilog or VHDL design. As a result, nets and components may disappear or appear with unexpected names in the list box as a result of optimization or other logic manipulations. Searching by name is not the only way. In particular, when looking for a logic component, such as an I.O. pin or a clock resource, it's easier to find the component by its site. Keep in mind that multiple list boxes can be displayed, which is handy many times. In particular, it's convenient to close the default list box and open a fresh one if its columns are too tight. And if the whole screen becomes a bit messy, it's possible to arrange it in the default setting anytime. The FPGA editor begins usually in a read-only mode, which means that you can't make any changes. The first thing I do when I start the FPGA editor is to change it to read-write mode simply by clicking the edit mode button. 
I will show other useful buttons as we go along. For now, I'd like to show a couple. If you select the net and click the attribute button, a window with some information will show up. The info button does more or less the same, only the information goes to the bottom window as text. Note that we get a complete list of the net's connections, which can turn out very useful when investigating a design. Also, try this out for components. 